Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I apologize. I just had a huge sneezing fit, so I sound a little congested. Hope to God I don't sneeze anymore, but it is what it is. Anyway, today we're going to be looking into, again, the Emerald Tablets, Tablets number seven, which is the Seven Lords. Um, if you are new, welcome. I'm really glad you're here, but um, we have been doing, obviously, we're on Tablet seven. So we've already covered the first six tablets. I will put links to those down in the description box below so you can catch up. Um, we finished up Tablet 6 on Aquarius Rising Africa last week. And as you guys know, we are doing this congruently with Aquarius Rising Africa. Aquarius Rising Africa, those shows are Monday Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. They're live shows. So these are pre-recorded. So I think I'm going to be releasing this probably around 8 a.m. Monday morning. Um, so you can kind of hear Tablet 7 before we go into the discussion over Tablet 7 over on Aquarius Rising Africa. And yes, I will put a link to Aquarius Rising Africa in the description box below. If you're not subscribed, you can go ahead and subscribe to their channel. All right. So Emerald Tablet, Tablet 7. I think we're going to read this like we did with Tablet 6 where I'm going to go over. I'm going to read... Um, Thoth's, what Thoth has to say, and then we're going to go back and look at Doriel's commentary. There are, for those who have asked, you can get a free PDF of the Emerald Tablets online. You can just Google Emerald Tablet, Tablet 7, and uh, it'll pull up, but it's only Thoth's, it's, o it's only a, 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 the Emerald Tablets. There's no commentary. There's multiple, multiple people who have done commentary on the Emerald Tablets. This was what came recommended to me, Doriel. Uh, Billy Carson, as you know, I'll put a link to his channel. He he's like kind of the expert on the Emerald Tablets, if you will. And I do listen. I like I listen. I would love to talk to Billy Carson. So I will put a link to his channel down in the description box below, so you can hear his commentary. Uh, I've gotten his comments uh, with some of my videos where I go through these books. Listen, this isn't an audio book. I'm not not reading this for audible i'm reading over the emerald tablets and other books to give commentary myself and um the reason why i'm doing this is because off camera my job off camera i have been studying spirituality and spiritual philosophy for 17 years now and this is what i do for a living off of camera so i'm not saying i'm the expert by any stretch of the imagination but i do know a thing or two about what thoth is talking about due to my past study and my current study and my current job um if that's something that you don't like uh then you can probably find somebody just reading it on audible that's you can do that or you can just read it yourself but i am going to continue to give commentary because that's kind of the point of these videos is the commentary all right you guys let's start with emerald tablet tablet seven the seven lords which we've already spoken about the seven lords i believe they first came up in tablet three correct me if i'm wrong but i believe it was uh, tablet three where they first were introduced to us these are the seven chakras and i'm really excited because i have skimmed this over and it looks like we're going to get into a deeper understanding of who or what the chakras are, all that kind of stuff. So where the energy comes from, very interesting. All right, so let's start with Thoth speaking um, on Emerald Tablet. Seven, hearky, O man, and listen to my voice. Open thy mind space and drink of my wisdom. Dark is the pathway of life that she travel. Many the pitfalls that lie in thy way. Seek ye ever to gain greater wisdom, attain, and it shall be light of thy way. So this first verse, in my opinion, kind of sums up what we talked about in Tablet 6 before this one, where there was a huge conversation in Tablet 6 from Thoth about the Brothers of Darkness versus the Brothers of Light. And I mentioned this a lot on Aquarius Rising Africa. As we read through Tablet 6, it was almost like the macro and the micro were interchangeable. And again, if you've been on this channel for a while now, you know that it's all about the micro, that the macro is just a reflection of what is happening in the micro. And by the micro, I mean leading into shadow work, going into the shadow side of yourself in order to heal that side of yourself and present it to the light. And he's, he's, I feel like that's what he's kind of talking about here in this first verse, is that when you go on the pathway of enlightenment or trying to seek understanding of the light, 
it is going to be dark. There's going to be a lot of darkness. Um, the more you ascend yourself, the more you achieve a certain level of enlightenment, the more the darkness is going to try to attack you as well. So you have to be aware of, and also trickery he talks about the pitfalls. There are pitfalls that lie in the way. Yeah, there. Listen, we've done a whole thing on organic portals, which I will link that down below too. If you missed that, about what is an organic portal and how they get thrown at you when you are on this path of of the light, right? Again, if you missed tablet six, I will put all the tablets down in the description box below. So let me read that again. Hark ye, O man, and listen to my voice. Open thy mind and drink of my wisdom. Dark is the pathway of life that ye traveled. Many the pitfalls that lie in thy way attain, and it shall be light on thy way. So you can you can conquer these obstacles, and it's going to give you wisdom. Yeah? So attain, and it shall be light. The wisdom becomes light on thy way. Open thy soul, O man, to the cosmic, and let it flow as one with thy soul. Light is eternal, and darkness is fleeting. Seek ye ever, O man, for the light. Know ye that ever as light fills thy being, darkness of thee shall soon disappear. I like where he says light is eternal and darkness is fleeting. The darkness cannot sustain itself, but the light can't. We say that all the time on this channel. Darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create. All the darkness can do is steal from the light and invert from the light. So it's fleeting because it can't sustain itself. That's why the uh, Luciferians do particular rituals with innocent beings. Because I have to be careful about what I say because they're trying to harness that life force because it they can't sustain themselves. But light can so light is eternal and darkness is fleeting. Open thy soul to the brothers of brightness. Let them enter and fill thee with light. Lift up thine eyes to the light of the cosmos. Keep thou ever thy face to the goal. Only by gaining the light of all wisdom art thou one with the infinite goal. Seek ye ever the oneness eternal. Seek ye ever the light of the goal. And that is, you know, he's saying keep your eye on the prize, basically, because it is going to be hard. It, the, the initiate's journey is always, there's always obstacles that make you want to give up, that distract you, that lead you astray. But if you keep your eye on the goal of what you're trying to attain, then it, it will it will secure you in, in that path. And as I was reading this, a part of me thought, you know, that is constantly, even for myself, being on this journey for 17 years now, it's constantly rereading of the Yoga Sutras. It's constantly rereading, uh, we're rereading the Sophia Code on a, solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa, that that re-reminder of, of, of what it is you're trying to obtain, because it does get hazy the more that you are hit with certain obstacles. Light is infinite and light is finite, separated only by darkness and man. Seek ye to rend the veil of darkness. Bring thou together the light into one. So he's saying light is infinite and light is finite, separated only by the darkness of man. So that's again coming from your internal world, that shadow side of yourself, which is the attachments. Um, Wednesday of this week, there's going to be a video dropped where I talk more about the attachments to the false sense of self, to the anger, to the jealousy, to the greed, to these lower vibrational shadow side that we all have. It's, you know, we all have it. And if we ignore it and not work on it, it'll continue to persist. And that is the darkness that separates you from the light. Hark ye, O man, listen to my voice, singing the song of life and of light. Throughout all space, light is prevalent, encompassing all with its banners of flame. Seek ye forever in the veil of darkness. Somewhere ye shall surely find light. Hidden and buried, lost to man's knowledge, deep in the finite, the infinite exists, lost but existing flowing through all things, living in all in the infinite brain. In all space, there is only one wisdom. Though seemingly divided, it is one in the one. All that exists come forth from the light, and the light come forth from all. All that exists come forth from the light. The light is the only thing that can create. A lot of people like to say, oh, all these things that the darkness does, that the controllers do with the obelisk and all that stuff, you are giving them too much credit. They can't create anything. It's like a narcissist. 
narcissists can't create anything. They can only mimic and steal. They have no idea how to create on their own. So the light is the only thing that can create that can give existence to things. And he's harping here in this verse too about in all space, there's only one wisdom. Though seeming divided, it is the one with the one. We've seen this over and over again in the Emerald Tablets. We've also spoken about this with other books and other spiritual talks. This idea of separateness, that we are separate, that's just an illusion, right? We came here to experience the feeling of being separate, but it's just a feeling. Feelings aren't facts, are they? We're all one with the creator. That's the truth. We just have to get rid of that illusion of being separate. And he's saying that in all space, there is only one wisdom. Though seeming divided, it seems your illusion is that you're separate. It is one in the one. All existence comes forth from the light. And the light comes forth from all. Everything created is based upon order. Law, law rules the space where the infinite dwells. Forth from equilibrium, equilibrium, excuse me, came the great cycles, moving in harmony towards infinity's in. All right, so that reminds me again of, um, I've, I've spoken about this before, back a long time ago when I was doing research in the Skinwalker Ranch, and I studied the Navajo tribe, and they would teach their children about black magic and white magic. And that magic exists. It just depends on the path you're going to take. White magic or light working, you work with nature to help people move through what it is they're going through. You don't fight it. You work with it. With it. That's the laws. That's what he's saying here is, is everything is created and based upon order. Law rules the space where the infinite dwells. Forth from equilibrium came the great cycles, moving in harmony towards infinity's in. But black magic was where you work against nature for your own selfish desires. I loved that. I thought that was such a simple, but yet very powerful explanation. So here he's saying that there is law and order to the cosmos. We've talked about the laws of attraction, all that kind of stuff. And it's going to play itself out. This is where we get the laws of karma, which is cause and effect. But to be in harmony with the great cycles, to be to be accepting and, and in movement with the great cycles of the laws of the cosmos. Know ye, man, that far in the space time, infinity itself shall pass into change. Hear ye and list to the voice of wisdom. Know that all is of all evermore. Know that through time thou may pursue wisdom and find evermore light on the way. I, thou shalt find that ever receding, thy goal shall elude thee from day unto day. It's funny, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking there's so many people that, that think after like one year of work, they figured it all out. No, 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 that's, that's the pitfall, right? I've said this before, in Ashtanga, we always say the easiest students to teach are the beginner students and the advanced students, because both the beginner student and the advanced student know that they know nothing. It's the intermediate student that thinks they know everything, and that's the pitfall. But we go through those pitfalls, we learn from them, and we realize we we come at a place of humility that we've got, it takes time to develop this kind of wisdom. It takes many lifetimes to develop this kind of wisdom. So with that being said, let me reread that. Ye Know ye, O oh man, that far in the space-time, infinity itself shall pass into change. Hear ye and list the voice of wisdom. Know that all is all evermore. Know that through time thou may pursue wisdom and find even more light on the way. Knowledge is power, knowledge protects, and knowledge is infinite. It's never ending. I, thou shalt find that ever receding, thy goal shall elude thee from day to day. Long time ago in the halls of Amente, I thought, stood before the lords of the cycles, Mighty they in their aspect of power. Mighty they in their wisdom unveiled. So who again are these lords of these cycles? The chakra system. The chakra system. Led by the dweller, first did I see them, but afterwards free was I of their presence. Free to enter their conclave at will. Oft did I journey down the dark pathway into the hall where the light ever glows. And we know that these chakras, these seven points of our body where we hold different information, is where we learn and grow. 
learned I of the masters of cycles, wisdom brought from the cycles above us, knowledge brought from infinity's all. Many the questions I asked of the lords of the cycles. Great was the wisdom they gave unto me. Now unto thee I give of this wisdom, drawn from the flame of infinity's fire. Deep in the dark halls sit the seven units of consciousness from the cycles above. Manifest they in this cycle as guides of man to the knowledge of all. Seven are they, mighty in power, speaking these words through me to men. Time after time I stood before them, listening to the words that came not with sound. Once they said unto me, O man, wouldst thou gain wisdom? Seek for it in the heart of the flame. Wouldst thou gain knowledge of power? Seek for it in the heart of the flame. Wouldst be one with the heart of the flame? Seek then within thine own hidden flame and we see flame referencing a lot here we see this idea of acne or fire in many spiritual texts that is literal and figurative so if we look at the literal aspect of fire that is how we clean things that's how we reset things that's how nature resets itself when we look at the physical body part of the detoxing system is sweat right like my teacher in india always says how do you clean gold you boil it and all the impurities come to the top and you can wipe them away. When you sweat, you're creating a fire, an agony in the body that pushes out the impurities physically. But there's also the impurity of thought that will also shift and change as the patterning of the body changes. Spiritually, the fire, we see that the, the spirit, the soul being described as a fire. And so I just want to point that out. This is a common theme across many different spiritual texts. Many the times they spoke they to me, teaching me wisdom not of the world, showing me ever new paths to brightness, teaching me wisdom brought from above, gi giving knowledge of operation, learning law, the order of all. It's so interesting, as I'm recording this, I just finished up, um, it's Wednesday, I'm recording this for Monday, I just finished up Hathor from the Sophia Code with Aquarius Rising Africa. And we, you know, Hathor talks about in your DNA, you hold the quantum field of information of the whole cosmos, right? He's saying this here as well. He just reiterated. So I will put the reading of Hathor from my channel down in the description box as well if you missed that, because he's literally saying the same thing that I literally just read with Aquarius Rising Africa our solutions with Aquarius rising Africa. Many the times spoke they to me, teaching me wisdom, not of this world, showing me ever new paths to brightness, teaching me wisdom from above, giving knowledge of operation, teaching of law, the order of all. So not of this world. The chakras in your, in your system, your seven points, are coming from an energy field that are holding that quantum information. That is why it's so important to listen to your gut. That is why it's so important to be able to stand in your own understanding. Because you, it's like the story of Krishna, um, the, one of the Hindu characters, right? When Krishna was a baby, he was called Govinda. And his mother saw him eating, eating dirt, as kids do. And so she ran over and she opened his mouth and pulled the dirt out of his mouth. And she saw the whole universe inside him. You literally have the whole universe inside you. Thoth has said it, Hathor has said it, Krishna said it, Yeshua says, behold, the kingdom of heaven or hell are where? Inside you. It's not outside of you. Speak to me again, the seven saying, from far beyond the time where we come, O man, traveled we from beyond the space time, I, from the place of infinity's end. When ye and all thy brethren were formless, formed forth were we from the order of all, not as men are we, though once we too were as men, out of the great void where we formed forth into order and by law. For know ye that which is formed truly is formless, having form only to thine eyes. And we talked about this in the fourth and fifth tablet. Literally, your soul, your, your Shiva, your parusha is what's eternal. The body is the prakriti or the shakti, the expression of the soul. So your eternity is formless. And the chakras were brought in. The powers of the seven lords were brought in with the creation of your body, which you formed. And so they were the energy cycles coming in to teach you as you experienced this life as a human being. 
And again, unto me spoke the seven, saying, Children of the light, O Thoth, art thou free to travel the bright path upward until at the last all oneness becomes one. Fourth, we formed after our order three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Know ye that these are the numbers of cycles that we descend unto men, each having here a duty to fulfill, each having here a force to control, because every chakra has a certain information associated with it. Yet are we too seeking a goal far beyond man's con conception and infinity extends into the greater than all. Then in a time that is yet not a time, we shall all become one with the greater than all. Time and space are moving in cycles. Know ye their law and ye too shall be free. I free shall ye be to move through the cycles past the guardians that dwell at the door. Then he spoke to me, he of nine, saying, Eons and eons have I existed, knowing not life and tasting not death. For know ye, O man, that far in the future life and death shall be one with all, earth so perfected by balancing the order that neither existed in the oneness of all. In men of this cycle, the force, life force is rampant, but life in its growth becomes one with all. Here I manifest in this cycle, but yet I am there in the future of time. Time is an illusion. Yet to me, time exists not. I just said that. Time is really an illusion. For in my world, time exists not. Literally just said that. For formless are we. Life have we, but not yet have existed, fuller and greater and freer than thee. Man is a flame bound to a mountain, but we in our cycle shall ever be free. Know ye, O man, that when you have progressed into the cycles that lengthen above, life itself will pass into the darkness, and only the essence of the soul shall remain. Boom! Check out the video I'm releasing this Wednesday because we talk about this. Again, the body is the Shakti of the soul, but it's not the soul, right? That's man's suffering. So what Patanjali says in the Yoga Sutras is that man's suffering is that you think your identity of your body is who you are and that identity is going to die one day. You are a flame in bondage of a mountain. But once you realize that you are the flame and not the mountain, you can bust through the illusions of the mountain to be forth into what you really are, which is a formless and eternal soul. All right. Then spoke to me the Lord of the eight, saying, All that ye know is but a part of little. Not as yet have ye touched on the great. For out in space, where light reigns supreme, I came into the light. Formed was I also, but not as ye are. Body of light was my formless form formed. Not that I know that it not... Know I not life, and know I not death, yet masters I am of all that exist. Seek ye and find the path through the barriers, travel the road that leads to the light. Spoke again to me the nine, saying, Seek ye to find the path to the beyond. Not impossible it is to grow to a consciousness above, for when two have become one, the one has become the all. Know ye that the barrier has lifted, and ye are made free of the road. Grow thou from form to the formless. Free may thou be of the road. Thus through ages I listened, learning the way to the all. Now I lift my thoughts to the all thing, list ye and hear when it calls. O light, all pervading, one with the all and all with the one. Flow thou to me through the channel, enter thou so that I may be free. Make me one with the all soul, shining from the blackness of night. Free let me be of all space time, free from the veil of the night. I, a child of the light, commanded, free from the darkness to be, formless am I to the light soul, formless is shining with light. Know I the bonds of the darkness, must muster, sh shatter, and fall before light. Now I give this wisdom. Free may be, free may ye be, O man, living in the light and the brightness. Turn not thy face from the light. Thou soul dwells in the realms of brightness. Ye are a child of the light. Turn thou th they thoughts inward, not outward. Turn thou thoughts inward, not outward. Out nothing outside of you is going to save you. You got to save yourself. Go inward. Heaven or hell live inside of you. It's not somewhere you travel outside of you. It's all you boo. 
So turn thy thoughts inward, not outward. Find thou the light soul within. Know that thou art the master. All else is brought from within. Grow thou to realms of brightness. Hold thou thy thought on the light. Know that thou art one with the cosmos of flame and a child of the light. Now to thee I give a warning. Let not thy thoughts turn away. Know that the brightness flows thy body or eye. Turn not to the dark brightness that comes from the brothers of black. But keep thine eyes ever lifted. Thy soul tune into the light. We know that the brothers of darkness, as we talked about in tablet six, like to mimic the brothers of light to make you think you're following a good entity or a good path. But he's saying, be careful. That's why you go inward and not outward. It's always inward. Take ye this wisdom and heed it. Listen to my voice and obey. Follow the pathway to brightness and thou shalt be one with the way. All right, guys. So that was tablet seven from Thoth. We're going to go back and look at Doriel's commentary to see what Doriel has to say. But before we get to that, a quick word from our sponsors. If you are like me, then you love a good face mask. No, I kid you not. I have been obsessed with face masks since I was a teenager. I have memories of being in high school and having slumber parties with my girlfriends and trying different face masks. This has literally been something that I have been obsessed with my whole life. Now the problem with me is that I have very dry skin. So I have to be very, very careful with the type of face mask that I use. Otherwise it will dry my skin out too much and that itself starts to cause some problems. Well, of course, ASEA just released its own face mask. It ran for a trial run last month, and it looks like it's possibly, potentially here to stay. Now, of course, once the mask was released, they were gonna be doing the mask, I had to order one, just so I could try it out. Because again, girl loves a good face mask. I was a little bit nervous. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I was a little bit nervous that it might dry my skin out. But nonetheless, I thought, what's the harm in trying? I've loved all of their face care system I've been using up until this point, so let's just try the mask. Well, true story, I got the mask in last week. And so that night when I got it in, I washed my face. I put this mask on, when you, which you leave on for about 10 minutes set my bath up, my, ni my nightly bath, put my Epsom salts in, all that kind of stuff, grabbed my murder mystery book. I'm always reading some murder mystery book. Got in the bath, soaked for like an hour, washed the face mask off, got out of the bath, did the rest of my skin routine, went to bed. Well, the very, very next morning, I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend. We were still in our pajamas super early in the morning, and he reached over, touched my face, and gave me a kiss, and he noticed that my face felt tight. Like, I had had, like, a facelift or, like, Botox overnight. Now, he was not aware that I had done the face mask. He didn't even know that it had come in the mail the day before, and I said, interesting, I literally just did the ASEA face mask. And I went to look in the mirror and it had appeared overnight that my skin had tightened. Now, yes, I am 40 years old, so I'm kind of at that hinge age, right? I'm still young, but I'm moving into middle age. And so I am even more aware now about what I do to my skin as I enter into the latter part of my life. Since that first time using it, I've used it a couple of more times. And absolutely, I am feeling a difference. It really feels like I have had just someone pull the skin back. It's unbelievable. And so you can order the mask on its own. I actually have a couple more masks coming to me because I wanted to stock up. That's how good this mask is. Or you can get the bundle along with the brush. Personally, I have not used the brush, nor did I order the brush. I just use my hands. Or if you want, you can order a bundle of either your personal spa day with the with the lotion which i do have this lotion as well or you can come over here the ultimate gift for mom we know mother's day is coming up or if you just want to send your mom a gift because you know what you wouldn't be here without your mama or you could actually just order this for yourself but the mask again the mask is really something special because it really uh, after the first use i noticed a difference and so did my boyfriend so if this is something that you're interested in please look down in the description box below and you will see a link to the asia website where you can read more about the mask or all the other products that are offered by asia if you would like more information on asia 
what the products can do for you, what products would be best for you, how to get a SIA at a wholesale price, then you can text Bryce Info, B-R-I-C-E Info, to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to the telephone number 321-216-8047. If you are texting from another country, please make sure you add plus one, 321-216-8047. Not sure if the mask is available in other countries just yet. I know they're planning on releasing it to other countries, but some of the other products are definitely available in other countries. So please just text Bryce Info to the number listed below. Again, all that information is down in the description box. So here we are going back to the beginning of Tablet 7 to again hear what Doriel has to say about what Thoth is saying, his commentary. This tablet opens with a command to open your mind to the wisdom of Thoth. He says that life is filled with obstacles that must be conquered. The light of the cosmic must be allowed to flow into and through manifestation. The goal of all seeking must be oneness with the cosmic consciousness, otherwise there is limitation. As being a student of yoga for 17 years now, that makes absolute sense to me. That is absolutely, basically the crux of the yoga sutra is that you you don't know who you are you think your identity is who you are you think you have this bondage because you're limited to your human experience when actually you're a soul and so once you start to understand that you are not your identity you're not this body but a formless limited major magical soul of god then um your limitations start to form so you you man or your limitations start to to, to dissolve you manifested this hologram, the simulation of life in order for your soul to know itself. You have to, as Shanti says, we come, we come here to know what we're not. We're not our limitations. So the manifestation, so it has to flow through the manifestation of the nature of your creation in order to understand you're not limited. Only thing that's limiting you is your own thoughts and your own attachments. Light is both finite and infinite because God, the cosmic consciousness, is light and all things manifest in unmanifested are part of god therefore there could be no real separation even in the veil of darkness which we call negative the essence of light is hidden ready to spring forth when the veil is surrendered the infinite brain is lost to the comprehension of men who do not realize that everything is only separate manifestations of the one cosmic brain right we are we're under the illusion or the delusion that we're all separate we're not we're not. All aspects of wisdom, either in God or man, are part of the one wisdom manifestation through the diversity diversified channels. Law and order are fundamental rules of all creation, either in God or man. For only in order is balance or equilibrium found. Thoth is again speaking of the far past time before Atlantis sank. His first introduction was through the dweller, but afterward he knew the key and was able to enter himself. How different was he from most seekers today when given a key, he used it. <laughs> it's funny. It's because we all want to be coddled today. We want everyone to do it for us. We want to be saved by someone else. We want to. We want the white hats to come in and save us. We're, we think somebody is going to show up at our door with a million dollars. Meanwhile, there are people like myself, like Shanti, other people out there saying, no, you are the white hat. And instead of actually going, oh, wow, I have to do this myself. People go, no, I'm not going to use that key. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to sit here forever waiting for someone to come save me. When no one's coming to save you so he's saying that like in today's world we are expecting someone to do it for us we're given all this information we're given this chance to save ourselves the key he's saying the difference is thought was given the key and oh he actually used it instead of going no thanks i'm just gonna wait for someone to come do it for me he said okay cool and he started using it yeah it's kind of funny i'm gonna read that again because i think that was that was really funny what doriel wrote very savage but very true right thoth is again speaking of the far past time before atlantis fell his first introduction was to the dweller but afterward he knew the key and was able to enter himself how different he was from most seekers today when given a key he used it the lords of the cycles taught thoth of the cycles beyond so that he had knowledge of them and their workings even though he could not penetrate through santal to the higher cycles 
Thoth promised to give the wisdom he had learned. We are told that the lords are guides to man, and that this they are, for they teach him those things which are beyond the scope of this cosmic consciousness. He thereby gains knowledge of the extension of the ayat, which again, yeah, your chakras are your guides. They help you heal yourself, and through healing yourself, you become what you, you re-remember who you really are. According to the ancient symbolism, wisdom was found in the flame. Fire coming from the unmanifested, existing for a time in the manifesting, and then disappearing into the unmanifested became the symbol of consciousness. We spoke a lot about fire back when we were reading through, through Thoth's, um, his writings for Tablet 7. Which comes, okay, this, this, thus man is literally told to seek wisdom within his consciousness. Not outside of you, it's inside of you. The seven had come from beyond cycle time, which is limited, depending as it does upon radiation from the original infinite atom. The seven were part of the cosmic consciousness, which came forth from Ayad before we did and were therefore formed while we were still part of disorder. They had developed past the man stage, though when they occupied this cosmic cycle, they were like men. Consciousness is the ultimate in formless and flexible, assuming any form of which it has conception. Thoth is told that now he is free to travel the path until the final circle is completed, and that which once was, one again becomes one. The cosmic consciousness, which occupies the cosmic cycle beyond us, were formed in ordered sequence, not all at once. There are seven of those beyond us, and that is further out in space from the eye. Yeah, so the seven cycles within you are actually shooting out beyond you, which again goes back to things Hathor was saying. That will be down in the description box below, where we are living out parallel existence in other cosmic energy fields while we are in this one energy field too, because time doesn't really exist. It's only an illusion of our brain. All right, let's see. These lords through manifesting here are still connected to their own cosmic consciousness. Infinity is part of the greater space, which we call transcendental. When the Ayads have completed their extension into the infinite space, they will join the torchbearer in the transcendental space. The spirals of time space must be consciously known to one before he can move into them. When space and time are known, one has the, the develop the power to move backward and forward in space time so time travel is absolutely real because time doesn't actually exist it's all happening now in the now life and death exist only as a comparative terms everything has its opposite remove one pole and the other cease to exist in the plane of consciousness in which the higher cosmic consciousness of nine manifests death is not known therefore life is not known there is only existence, immortal and eternal, without change or focal point of manifestation or loss of conscious consciousness. Yes. This is all the Yoga Sutras, guys. All the Yoga Sutras. When man conquers death, he also has mastered life, and to him both cease to exist. The Lord of Nine is in his own place and timeless, for time is a result of the existence of materiality, and the ninth con cosmic consciousness does not manifest a materiality. The soul of man is the flame, which is bound to the mountain flesh. When we have become one with the ayod and the final completion of the infinite circle, materiality and life, which is one with the death, shall cease to exist. We will just be. And it's hard for the human brain to comprehend that, right? It's hard at, with the brain that's working to understand what that's like. But that is the goal to just be. In the eighth cycle also, life and death are one and only one external existence manifests. The eighth cosmic cycle is the cycle of light, for there is the infinite light and is consecrated upon the disorder sent from the ninth cycle, breaking into the division of kind, which are transmitted to lower cosmic cycles. As disorder changed to order and the basis of everything, light is master to all that exist. When the two parts of a unit of consciousness have become one, and the other part has become one with the one, thus becoming all, it is possible to go forward into the higher cosmic cycles. Thoth states clearly that all parts of his unit are known when he says his goal is in the all thing. Thoth uses a prayer to light, but as always ends with a command. To the light, what we call form is formless, for only in the light does true reality exist. 
God gives freely of his wisdom so that others may tread the same path. He commands his followers to ever keep their face towards the light, turning their thoughts towards the master within. What does guru mean? Transmitting darkness to light. Guru is the most important thing. So be careful of those who say there's no guru. That's trickery. Guru means, literally means in Sanskrit, to transmute darkness to light. The opposing force of the alchemist, the transition that's within you, the guru within you, the transmission of darkness to light within you. So let me read that again. He commands his followers to ever keep their face towards the light, turning their thoughts towards the master within. Thus shall they avoid the glittering promises of material power promised by the dark brothers. All right, you guys, that's the seventh tablet. Make sure if you're able to join us over on Aquarius Rising Africa this morning at 10 a.m. in a couple of hours where we're going to go through that again in a live discussion. So you're able to, to tap in your questions or ask. And of course, Shanti and Mornay will be there as well. And more heads are better than one. All right, you guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below.